the Bay Boulevard in the eastbound direction, just east of 19 at Sky Harbor Drive. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson and Utah Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line, 866 545 9595. 1250 Winds Weather Center forecast. A hot, muggy day. We'll see those temps in the mid 90s, but that uh, heat index that feels like temp will definitely be at and above 100 at times today. Uh, sunshine mixed with clouds, 40% chance of showers. And thunderstorm activity in upper 70s for the low tonight. Could see an evening stronger storm. Through the week, we'll see low 90s tomorrow, range uh, rather low mid 90s. Rain chance uh, 30%, then uh, more low 90s from Wednesday all the way through the end of the week. Rain chance up, though, about 50% starting Wednesday. Wall Street Dow is down 15. Mixed markets with the NASDAQ up 8. The S&P index gaining a fraction down to 16,836. The opinions, viewpoints, and promises made during the following program are not those of WHNZ AM, its staff, management, or parent company, Clear Channel Communications Incorporated. This is the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Now, live in studio, your host, local real estate expert, Jamie Maloney. Hi there, everybody. Happy Monday, and welcome to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Wins, WHNZ. If you're just finding me on the air, you'll find this show on every Mondays at noon, so I invite you to please tune in as my show aims to become your information source for the Tampa Bay real estate market. On the show today, in the second half of the show, we're going to be talking with uh, Mark Savino with uh, Mark's Painting, all about uh, commercial and residential painting and some great information uh, you may not be aware of You know, when it comes to uh, painting your home. And also in studio with me today, I've got my uh, lovely co-host, Stella Giudicelli, also a realtor with Coldwell Banker. Stella, how are you doing today? I am very good, thank you. How are you, Jamie? I'm doing great. How was the uh, weekend? Uh, my weekend was working. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't have uh, much uh, exciting uh, things to say about everyone else going to the beach this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, there was lots of, you know, weather is nice now and this is what's happening, but... Uh, I had to refuse and uh, stay at the office. Yeah, sure. I guess you've been there too, huh? I've seen yes. you at the office. Yeah, quite the uh, dedicated agents we are in this, uh -huh. uh, in this very uh, difficult business. You have uh, the passion or you don't. Yes. Uh, any uh, any new health uh, updates? Any new uh, things you're involved in? I know you're big in the uh, health industry and, and green juicing and all that. Anything going on in that? Right. Uh, we have a uh, the July uh, detox, uh, green juice detox, so vegetables... Uh, that we juice um, happening the second week of July. Uh, we are doing the detox from uh, Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. Uh, this documentary, we're taking the detox from there. It's actually very tasty and it works. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And also I am organizing a crepe party. So being French, I miss my crepes. Crepes, crepes, crepes. Yeah, okay. so I'm organizing a crepe party. Okay. Uh, I guess John likes them too over there. Um, and that's going to be at a Pecan Restaurant um, in Hyde Park Village. And we'll get that information up on the website and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're uh, obviously putting that stuff out there a so lot. So that's not very healthy, but, you know, I think I believe that to be healthy, you need to indulge as, as well. You need to to uh, sometimes um, eat not that, that, not that good so that you can eat good most of the time. So that's the crepe party that is going to happen the third week of July. And what about the uh, World Cup? Have you been following that? Uh, I am going to be following up when uh, we're more, more uh, advanced in the games. Uh, and of course, his friends is playing. Um, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be on it. But right now, it's just kind of the beginning and I'm waiting for you know the games to be more into it. Well, Have you? Have you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a textbook. Tell me more. Keep me updated. What happened this I, weekend? I'm textbook bandwagoner. Of course, America plays uh, uh, tomorrow uh, against Belgium. I'm pretty certain. And uh, okay. you know, we lost Ooh. our last match to Germany, but we sneaked through. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an exciting time to be a soccer fan. And although I'm a more of a bandwagon soccer fan, but it's definitely uh, fun to see all the interest and uh, people, you know, coming out to the uh, restaurants and the bars and, and the screams and yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's quite an exciting time. Hopefully, America can get a little bit further. You know, in the in the tournament and uh we'll be definitely a very exciting uh time if they get you know a couple more wins and then the basket so a couple things i wanted to talk about uh i am a hud uh, local listing broker and when i say hud i'm talking about the department of housing and urban development and i list their properties and it's a it's a unique area of real estate so i have a lot of selling agents uh that listen to my show and everything and to get updates and uh historically uh when hud acquires the property 
And when I say when I'm talking about acquires the property, HUD is a is a government, uh, large government agency. But with respect to the housing, uh, um, with the foreclosures that I deal with, when a lender makes a mortgage on a property, they can go to the uh, FHA and have the loan insured so that they can let the borrower just have a smaller down payment. And so the HUD functions as an insurance agency. So if the borrower were to default on their mortgage, the uh, lender then files an insurance claim with HUD, and then the lender is made whole again, and then um, HUD acquires the property. When HUD acquires the property, they have it appraised. And the historically, the list price that they put the property on the market at was the appraised value. Now this changed as of the last mortgagee letter that came down last December, which gave um, the uh, outsourcers, the people that are managing these properties on behalf of HUD, the people that have the government contracts, the right to take into consideration not only the appraisal, but the broker's opinion of value. And so there was some change and people were getting confused, selling agents were getting confused, properties were being put on the market and they weren't necessarily being listed at their appraised value, but they were being listed at above their appraised value. And where this comes into to effect is that when a buyer is making an offer on an FHA uh, owned prior HUD owned property, that HUD appraisal is tied to that property. And so they're, they're, they have to go off of that appraised value. And so if the property is listed at 110000 <clears throat> but the appraised value is only 100000 and they bid 110000 well, now they are in a position where they are upside down and they have to bring in an additional $10,000 uh, to the closing because uh, FHA will only insure, I mean, will only lend up to 96.5% of the appraised value, which in my example was 100000 So, But now a new change, and I think this is as a result of, you know, some of this confusion that's been out there with, you know, the, the outs outsourcers putting properties on the market at above pra appraised value. HUD is no longer uh, providing a copy of the appraisal to purchasers. So that's a big change, something that in this contract and prior contracts, um, you know, was not the norm. So if you're out there as a selling agent selling uh, HUD government-owned properties, you know, it's now the buyer's responsibility to work with their lender <coughs> to obtain an appraisal. And so keep that in mind. These properties are still being appraised, and um, there's a new mortgagee letter is due out soon that will kind of clarify some of this. And when I say a mortgagee letter, that is the guidance that is put out by the Department of Housing and Urban Development to the different lenders, a mortgagee being the bank. And it will give them guidance on how they can um, make loans under FHA financing. But when a property is appraised, they give it three categories in the website for HUD properties, HUDHomestore.com. And these are unique, great, uh, great programs uh, surrounding HUD properties out there that you know I'm going to mention here in just a moment, whereby uh, you can get these properties um, if you're a teacher, a firefighter, or an emergency responder under the Good Neighbor Next Door program, you can get these things for 50% off the appraised value. And it's it's unfortunately not a common practice because there's just not a lot of inventory that's put out there on the market. But if you're in one of those categories, I recommend that you go to the website, hudhomestore.com, and on the main page, there'll be a buyer category drop-down box. If you select lottery or Good Neighbor Next Door as the uh, category, it'll bring up properties that are in this bid period. Now, when you make offers on these government properties, listing agents do not see these, so it's very important that you work with selling agents that understand these properties. And so when you're interviewing you know, realtors and working with, uh, you know, going out and seeing properties, if this is a uh, something that you're looking at, you probably wanna work with a HUD listing agent. I myself can definitely help you out in that. But the supply of inventory with the Good Neighbor Next Door properties is limited. So I always recommend that people that are in that category to begin their home search, you know, about a year in advance. And when one of those properties comes up, you can possibly pick this thing up, you know, before it gets to the general list period, which is known as the exclusive bid period. And when those properties go to the exclusive bid period, they're no longer eligible for the Good Neighbor Next Door participants. That bid period is uh, 15 days. So if you're an investor out there looking to buy government-owned properties, there is a 15-day. I'm um, sorry, no, it's now. Yeah, it's still 15 days. It had changed. It was a 30, and I always get these confused because different banks have different uh, bid periods that they restrict investors. Fannie Mae, for instance, and Freddie Mac, they have a 20-day wait period for investors. So the banks, the GSEs, the government servicing entities, really put a lot of uh, – emphasis on promoting home ownership and it's an important part of my show as well and in my role in selling the bank owned properties is to promote home ownership 
And uh, so just want to always, you know, mention, you know, HUD Home Store, a great website, great opportunities to pick up some properties. But going back to my, you know, original uh, point I was trying to make, when the properties are appraised, they get put into one of three categories, whether they're insurable, insurable with a repair escrow, or they're uninsurable. And when I talk about insurance, I'm not talking about property insurance, I'm talking about FHA insurability, the ability of the property to meet condition standards so the lender can get an FHA uh, insurance on it because some properties do not meet the condition guidelines and certain repairs have to be made. And so you're going to get all this information at HUDHomestore.com. And if the property is insurable, it means a buyer can get an FHA loan without any repair escrow necessary. If it has uh, lender required repairs of $5,000 and under, a borrower would have to bring that money to uh, a repair uh, escrow account for repairs to be done after closing. And this is deemed by the appraiser upon assignment of the property when they first appraised the property. And if the property is greater than uh, $5,000 in lender required repairs, then the property is considered to be uninsurable and a buyer would have to use alternative forms of financing or cash. And uh, so just a common mistake that I see a lot of uh, selling agents make when they're selling the hub, the government owned properties, they don't fully understand the repair escrows. They don't fully understand that these properties are as is and that they have different conditions and problems with them and that they really need to talk with the listing agents, have the discussion with the buyer that putting in an offer on this property, we may run into some repair issues because uh, government-owned properties, as well as any foreclosed properties, these are distressed properties. The mortgagor, the the borrower, was not making their payments on the property, so they weren't making you know the you know the maintenance payments on the properties as well. So these homes have begun to deteriorate in many cases. You know, one to even four years of deferred maintenance. And when you get a, pro a mortgage on a property, not only do you, the borrower, have to qualify for the mortgage, but the property itself must meet you know certain health and safety guidelines. So if there's leaking, any uh, mold or um, holes in floors, walls, things like that, uh, infestation problems, those have to be rectified before closing. And if you're dealing with an as-is property, well, now you've got in a situation where the seller may not be willing to or able to work with a buyer. So keep that stuff in mind. Uh, coming back from the break, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to buy some of these bank-owned properties and some tips that you need to know in addition to the ones I just gave out. So if you're just tuning in, you've been listening to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Wins, WHNZ, back in a moment. Hi, Jamie Maloney here, your host of the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Wins, WHNZ. The goal of the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show is to be your source of real estate information in the Tampa Bay market. I've been in business for seven years now and have sold nearly 1,000 homes in and around the Tampa Bay market. I work with 45 different banks and asset management companies selling foreclosed properties and have extensive knowledge on buying these foreclosed properties and want to help you understand opportunities in the marketplace as well as common pitfalls I see many buyers as well as realtors make each and every day. I'm excited about this new show and being able to share my experiences and knowledge as well as my contacts with you, my audience. Each week, the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show will feature information on the real estate market you need to know to position yourself as an educated player in the business, as well as feature real estate professionals from around the Tampa Bay region. You'll hear a lot about HUD government-owned properties, as well as Fannie Mae-owned properties, and the different programs they have available to help make you a homeowner. My show aims to promote home ownership as well as responsible real estate investing and will highlight real estate success stories from in and around the region. If you'd like to be part of the show or have a real estate success story you'd like me to highlight on the air, or if you have general questions you'd like me to discuss on air, I invite you to reach out to me at tampabayradio.com. Just fill out the contact form or email me and give me a call at 813 760 8516 again 813-760-8516 i or one of my assistants will be in touch with you to discuss your real estate needs please don't hesitate to contact me the real estate market is a fast-paced constantly changing arena and my show is your source of what you need to know to come out ahead again reach out to me at tampabayradio.com or 813-760-8516 I invite all real estate professionals that are interested in promoting their business and expertise on air to please reach out to me. Show contributor openings are available and will fill up fast. Whether you are involved in lending, title, 
building sales, basically anything tied to the housing market, I want to hear from you. Become part of the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show and grow your business with mine on air. Again, I've been in business 70 years and have sold nearly 1,000 homes in the Tampa Bay region, and I can help you position yourself as an industry leader. Take a moment to visit my website at tampabayradio.com, and be sure to like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show to keep up to date with show developments each and every week. Thanks for tuning in. In the market for a reverse mortgage? Contact Access Reverse, a local company with personalized service in the Bay Area. Call them at 727-347-0305 or visit accessreverse.com for a no-cost, no-obligation consultation. They'll come to your home and speak with you about the best options for your reverse mortgage. Plus, they offer the lowest closing costs. Don't just get a reverse mortgage. Get the right reverse mortgage with Access Reverse. Visit accessreverse.com. NMLS number 1179063. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit HUDHomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as its appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit HUDHomestore.com. Since opening its doors 120 years ago, Stewart Title Company has established a lasting legacy of providing professional title services. Even other title insurance companies know Stewart Title Company because they do their actual underwriting for them. Stewart is here to provide a wide range of resources to help improve any real estate transaction. To learn more about protecting yourself against hidden title hazards that may threaten your financial investment, call Melissa Stoddard at 813-431-8025. That's 813-431-8025. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage want you to experience the thrill of one-day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12-day clear-to-close. They do this by utilizing their world-class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. Underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. You're listening to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show with local expert Jamie Maloney. Now, here's Jamie. Hi again, everybody, and thanks for staying tuned in to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Wins WHNZ. If you're just finding my show, I invite you to tune in every Mondays at noon as my show aims to become your information source for the Tampa Bay real estate market. Got some uh, properties here I want to promote, and if you watch my streamcast, you'll see them here coming up here on the stream. You can find the uh, live stream at tampabayradio.com under the show info tab and the live stream link. Got a uh, pre-list opportunity down in Covington Park, 7008 Monarch Park Drive. It's a three-bed, two-bath home. Got it up on the uh, screen now if you're watching the uh, streamcast. 1,413 square feet. Features a screen patio porch and a spacious fenced backyard with laminate flooring throughout, and it's in good condition. All kitchen appliances remain, less the refrigerator, and this is a VA-owned asset, so there'll be no resales on the re uh, on, no restrictions on the resale, I should say. So begin conducting uh, your due diligence, but this property should be hitting the market here sometime within the next couple of weeks. And keep in mind, this is a pre-list property, so I do not have a price on it just yet, but a nice subdivision home down in Covington Park. Got another pre-list opportunity up in Palm Harbor, 2901 Lake Valencia Boulevard East, a beautiful four-bed, three-bath home with 1,788 square feet, corner lot, and features a screened pool. And this property also is a VA asset, so there'll be no restrictions on the uh, purchase and the resale. So uh, conduct your due diligence. This is a great home in a great area, very uh, very beautiful exterior. The interior needs uh, some updating, uh, but uh, begin... Um, Conducting uh, your due diligence on that if you are as a buyer or a realtor have a buyer looking in this area up in Palm Harbor And you can find more information on this these properties at tampabayradio.com under the search properties tab I have all of my pre-list properties on that site as well got a property on the market uh, Ready to uh, bring all offers. This is an investor owned asset at 4707 West Fairview Heights South Tampa South of Gandy 
in the Gandy Gardens section. It's a two bed, two bath house with 1,352 square feet, over 100 days on market, listed at 99.9. Uh, sellers looking to bring all offers. So a great South Tampa opportunity and the South Tampa market, especially South of Gandy, is very uh, hot right now with a lot of very good fix and flips going on down in that market. So if you're an investor, you might want to take a closer look at what's going on south of Gandy at this time. Uh, just listed, just listed today, as a matter of fact, 8835 Crystal Creek Court up in Lando Lakes in Lakeshore Ranch. Very, very nice asset. $325,000, and it's a VA-controlled asset, and there are no resale restrictions on this property. It's a four-bed, three-bath home, 3,358 square feet, built in 2009, featuring a pool. And so I invite you again, uh, you can view this property on the MLS as well as the other one, the other two, as well as many of my other pre-list properties at TampaBayRadio.com via the uh, search properties tab and uh, pre-list properties. Specifically about this property, um, what was the condition? Well, have which you, one? Have you been the last one? 8835 Crystal Correct, Creek. at 325,000. Uh, tile flooring throughout in very con get good condition. I mean, it's moving ready. Uh, upstairs, yes. loft, uh, very spacious. Put a pool table or something up there. Uh, very uncommon condition for many of my assets. Right. Uh, you know, and walking into them, and it hasn't been repaired or anything. Uh, the prior owner left that one in pretty good condition. Beautiful. Great to hear. Um, to come back to um, the conversation we were having just before the break, I was trying to understand why HUD is going this route in not disclosing appraisals. And um, do you want to – can you discuss about this? Yeah. Sorry. I mean, what it is is the um, – that as of the last mortgagee letter in December, they allowed the outsourcers to have more control in setting their own opinion of value. They were no longer tied to just the appraised value. And in my experience, the uh, appraised values were coming in very low. My uh, opinion of values were generally coming in, you know, probably 10, 15 percent higher, and they were listing at these higher values. So do I understand that um, at the present moment, appraisals are not moving as fast as the market is going up in prices, the market is appreciating We're and appraisals a, are not going with it? I'm seeing appraisers be very conservative mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. They're under tighter regulations now and tighter scrutiny. Obviously, they came under you know heavy uh, criticism after 2005 and 2006 because of the run-up in values and the ease at obtaining you know the contract price for the appraised value. And so a lot of appraisers are um, you know much more conservative uh, these days. And uh, you know I think that has a lot to do with it. So basically, HUD so that um, they were not selling as much as they could, so they're not showing the appraisal. They the don't officially. Anymore. They didn't officially yeah. say that, but yeah, and they try just, to be more at market price, basically. Yeah, they, the appraisal's price. Yeah, and I, as a you know listing agent, do I mean a lot of people would think, well, wouldn't you want your sellers to underprice property so you can sell them quicker? Well, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, not when they're substantially underpriced because my phone rings off the hook, mm -hmm. and I get email after email, offer after offer, and then people try to you know lowball the low low value as it is. And so, no, I would much rather than price it at, you know, my opinion of fair market value, right. even if it's got to sit for 30 days. I mean, a properly priced asset should sell around a 30 day mark. In my opinion, you should have interest immediately within the first two weeks right. and you should have good offers, you know, in hand by a 30 day period. If it's, you know, post 30 days and you don't have an offer in hand, well, then you've either got a unique asset that requires a special buyer or you may have, you know, a pricing problem. But then again, you got to look at the property and, you know, is it a unique property? and will it require additional time on market. But if it's like a subdivision home, they're moving quite regularly, and it hasn't sold in 30 days right now, you've definitely got a price problem, and uh, you definitely would want to review that with uh, your listing agent. So if you're just tuning in, uh, you've been listening again to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Wins, WH and Z. And again, you can find this show on every Mondays at noon. So I invite you to please tune in as my show aims to become your information source for the Tampa Bay real estate market. Coming back from the break, we're going to be talking with Mark Savino. He is a uh, painter and contractor, runs his own business uh, known as Mark's Painting, conveniently enough. So we're going to be talking all about interior and exterior paints, uh, a little bit about lead-based paint, uh, a little bit about mold and uh, remedi remediation along those lines. And so I invite you to please stay tuned as he's got a lot of great information. So again, you're listening to the Jamie Mullen Real Estate Show here on 1250 Wins, WHNZ, back in a moment.
It's time for the Morgan & Morgan Legal Brief. A firm's mission statement defines your hopes, dreams, and aspirations. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. We take very seriously our obligations to our clients, many who come to us in their most desperate hour. Our mission is you, Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Your lawn destroyed by insects above ground and below. Bear Advanced Complete Insect Killer protects against both in one easy step. Most other leading brands stop at the surface, allowing damage to continue below ground. But Complete's two-way formula kills ants, fleas, and ticks above ground within 24 hours, while it penetrates below ground to control root-destroying pests, like grubs and mole crickets, for up to three months. Bear Advanced Complete Insect Killer. Get more from the Blue Bottle. BearAdvanced.com. Always read and follow label directions. We got you covered on both sides of the bay with classic rock. She's my best friend's girl. Tell your friends. Thunder 105.9 in Tampa and in St. Pete at 94.5. I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step -step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the Total Transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-800-241-7640. 1-800-241-7640. That's 1-800-241-7640. 1-800-241-7640. Need AC? Call Simpson Air, the coolest guys in town. Log on to thecoolestguys.com. This report is brought to you by Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Tampa. Visit Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Tampa and enjoy world-class gaming and dining any day of the week. Be sure to check out SeminoleHardRockTampa.com for the latest action and follow them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. From the Bright House Network's Traffic Center, delays along eastbound I-4, serious accident along eastbound I-4 at 50th Street has the two left lanes blocked, only a right lane able to squeeze by with delays back to the 275 interchange. Usual slowdown, southbound 275 from I-4 into Howard, and a crash in the Madeira Beach area along Gulf Boulevard at 144th Avenue. You see traffic problems, call the injury firm of Abrahamson and Uterwick Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line at 866-545-9595. <laughs> Twelve fifty winds, weather center forecast, sunny skies with scattered clouds, rain chance today 40%, seeing that uh, start to pick up in the east coast, uh, just to the southeast of Orlando, some heavy showers, you can see some storms mixed in throughout the afternoon, and then an evening one as well, with those highs, mid-90s, that feels like temp, heat index well above 100 today, uh, as we get into the uh, mid-portion of the day, so it will be very muggy and hot. Lows in the upper 70s and for tomorrow, low 90s, mid-90s inland, 30% chance of rain, 50% by Wednesday, and low 90s for the rest of the week from then on. Wall Street Dow's down 10, NASDAQ up 12, S&P index up a fraction, Dow 16,841. You're listening to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show with local expert Jamie Maloney. Now, here's Jamie. Hi again, everybody. Happy Monday, and welcome back to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Wins WHNZ. If you're just finding me on the air, I invite you to tune in every Monday as my show aims to become your information source for the Tampa Bay real estate market. Off air, I invite you over to my website, tampabayradio.com, where you can find all of my uh, properties as well as some uh, past shows as well. Actually, all the past shows uh, for the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show over on the show info tab. And as well, you can watch the live stream each week where I often give out many of my pre-list properties and uh, some tips on how to buy some of these bank-owned properties. Uh, at this time, got uh, my one of my regular contributors calling in here, Malcolm Tennant. He is a uh, reverse mortgage specialist with Access Reverse. Malcolm, how are you doing today? Jamie, I'm uh, doing wonderful today. Too blessed to be stressed, as they say. <laughs> Very interesting. I've not heard that one. Is that an original? Uh, I'd like to say so, but I don't <laughs> think so. I heard somebody else that uh, it goes too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. Very nice. Well, very good tips uh, to start this uh, shortened Monday. I mean, we've got Fourth of July coming up. Uh, any big plans uh, for the three-day weekend? Yeah, actually, uh, friends of ours have uh, uh, a hotel right on... Uh, 
uh, Treasure Island. We're going to go down and watch the fireworks, spend the, the fourth down there, and uh, beyond that, uh, spend some time with family. Sounds like a plan. So what do you got for us today in the uh, reverse mortgage uh, industry? Well, there's just actually some big news this morning. Uh, it doesn't affect that many people, but for those that does, it's, it's good news. Uh, for uh, borrowers have to be age 62 to get a reverse mortgage. And uh, up until now, if, if one spouse was under 62, the only option was to take that spouse off the deed, and that, that created problems later if, if the older spouse died first. Uh, they've just FHA has just changed the rules this morning, and uh, now we can keep the younger spouse on the loan, and which means they're in the house for life, uh, provided they comply with the you know the the terms of the uh, the loan, uh, just like the uh, the older spouse, and they, they actually opened it up for for spouses down to age 18. Wow, that sounds like a big change and something that's definitely going to benefit uh, people that uh, receive these uh, reverse mortgages. Would you say not? Yeah, definitely. For for people in that position, uh, it it really it, it really uh, will make a uh, a big improvement. It will actually make open up the program for more people, which is a, is a good thing. Yeah, and, and you're obviously just a reverse mortgage specialist, and there's a lot of misinformation out there on the market about you know the dangers of reverse mortgages. And but you know, you and I have talked many times on our show, you know, about you know the safety of these instruments. Just as long as you continue to pay the taxes and insurance on the property, I mean, you're at no risk for foreclosure. Am I correct? That's right. I mean, there, there's some other basic conditions. You have to live there. You can't sell it. You, you, it can't be condemned by the city. You know, just basic kind of things, You common sense things. But, yeah, exactly. This, this is a lifetime uh, agreement once you get into it. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, people tend to uh, often experience other problems, don't pay their taxes or insurance is, is the big one. Uh, when, when that happens, the press uh, has a tendency to really play up the issue as if it was a reverse mortgage issue when, in fact, the reverse mortgage ha had nothing to do with it. It was uh, like with any mortgage, you have to continue to pay your taxes and insurance. Absolutely. So, uh, Malcolm, real quick, how can uh, people that are interested in reverse mortgages get in touch with you off air? Uh, simplest thing is just call me here at our – we're at the, been at the – we've been at the same location here in St. Petersburg for the last 10 years, uh, 727 727- Three four seven zero three zero five seven two seven three four seven zero three zero five, or they could go to our website. Also, it's accessreverse dot com. All right, sounds good, Malcolm. Thank you very much uh, for calling in and giving us an update on the uh, reverse mortgage market. Have a great Monday, man. Thanks a lot, Jamie. Happy Fourth to you, and. Uh, Talk to you soon. Sounds good. And if you didn't catch his information, you can always find him on the Tampa Bay radio page under the expert uh, contributors as he is a uh, regular to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show. I want to go and bring in my uh, guest for the show, Mark Savino. He is the owner of Mark's Painting and has been in the painting industry since 1987. And after over 20 years of service in the Tampa community, he feels confident that he can cater to your painting needs. He is also a licensed contractor in Hillsborough County since 1989 and is a member of PDCA, which is the Painting and Decorators Contractors of America. Mark's painting gets the job done, and he doesn't just meet expectations, he exceeds them. Mark's customers keep coming back because he's dependable, knowledgeable, and pleasant to work with. Mark, welcome to the show. Hi. How are you today? Hey, doing great. So, Mark, tell me a little bit more about yourself and your company and your experience. Well, uh, I like I said, I've been in the business since 87. Um, I uh, have done all, all types of painting, residential, commercial, you know, mostly and up to two stories. Um, my company is a very small company. I have uh, four guys working for me plus myself. And uh, when you hire Mark's Painting, you get me as well because uh, I'm not a guy who owns a company and then just drops people off. I'm a hands-on so you're uh, out there actually painting some of the, the properties, right? And, and I'm I'm there at least three quarters of the day. A lot of times, uh, uh, when I'm not there, I'm estimating other properties or getting materials and everything or paperwork that I need to be done. Now, what is your service area? What do you cover in uh, this area? And anywhere in Hillsborough County, Hillsborough County, mm -hmm. you cover. You stay out of Pasco, Pinellas, and yeah, those areas. Yeah. Okay, and you said you had uh, four other painters that are on staff. Right, exactly. Okay, and you also do residential and commercial projects right. as well. Probably in an eighty twenty ratio. So what is uh, what is your uh, liking more is, is residential the is more your forte or would you say commercial is something you'd like to get in more of well or? yeah residential is my favorite because you're dealing with uh, the person to person with commercial a lot of times you're either dealing with a general contractor or you're dealing with a, a property manager or an out of like we did some stores in the mall recently we're dealing with a, a, a maintenance company out of, out of state so you're 
you tend it's tend to be less personal. I, I like the personal approach. I like dealing with people one on one, looking at them, help you know, telling them what I can do for them directly, and it's, that's why it's my favorite. Now, do you get a, in, uh, involved with the color selection process with the homeowners as well? Yeah, I'll help Matt. I always uh, emphasize that it, it, no matter what the chip looks like, we buy uh, the small eight ounce color samples. I tell them that, that lighting changes the color. What what you have is flooring and uh, decorations also uh, affects the color. So we. I always emphasize to put the, a sample on so they can see it in the real real time lighting and and usually about twenty or twenty five percent of the time people are surprised that it doesn't look the same so they make an adjustment. And there's different uh, qualities of paint. Uh, and I want to go through them real quick with you. You got the satin, uh, gloss, semi gloss, and the flat finish. Right. I mean, how do you? What are where are you supposed to use those different types of paints for in the different areas of the uh, home? I normally recommend in the bulk of the house an eggshell or a satin, which different companies will call theirs an eggshell and some will call it a satin. It has a little bit of a sheen to it. It has a high wear, easy to clean. Flats are in, should be in areas, it, it, best the bedroom, where you're not going to have as much traffic. Uh, semi-gloss and glosses are usually used on doors and trim work, which are going to have the highest wear, or and or bathrooms, because a uh, bathroom will take, uh, uh, you have to deal with humidity and moisture. And do you usually use like a, just a flat on the ceilings, or do you use a satin on ceilings? A uh, flat is on the bulk of the house, and in, in bathrooms and kitchens where you're going to have some moisture, I always recommend uh, a satin. Okay, and, and tell me a little bit about surface preparation, the importance of priming and stuff. A lot of people will just buy paint, just start painting. Is that advisable, or how right. important the, is priming? The prep is the most important part. Uh, as far as uh, if a homeowner is doing it themselves, I would always recommend a primer, no matter what paint they buy, because it's better to do one coat of primer and one finish coat than two of the just finish coat. Okay, so that's usually what happens. And if you don't use a primer, you end up doing multiple coats, but the primer allows you to do less coats. Right, then. it gives you better adhesion. Uh, also, uh, it does not uh, allow the, the paint to uh, flash as far as soaking into the substrate. So you, you, it gives you a more even finish so that when you go back to touch it up later, uh, you uh, with, Like with an eggshell, if you just paint two coats of it on, and it, it'll tend to leave a shiny spot. So people say, oh, this paint doesn't touch up very well because well, the surface prep and the prime wasn't done correctly. So you end up, the, the even though you have a good product, it doesn't touch up. Okay. And now we got, do you also do exterior painting of homes? Yes. Yeah, okay. that, How does the cost uh, vary from uh, exterior paint versus interior paint? Are they one and the same? Or they're they they're very similar. The, only, the what, what causes interior painting to exceed exterior would be occupied houses that have a lot of furniture you're going in there and we're, we're then we become in the furniture moving business we have to move everything to the center cover everything up uh, it becomes 20 uh, percent of your time is just moving moving items around mm -hmm. so the bulk of what i do ends up move-ins like or that are vacant i've got a few of those coming up next week you're able to get in get out do it before they buy and uh and and you're and you're i always wondered that so as an interior painter i mean you do move the stuff around for people or right. is that something yeah, we, you give we, them the we option it, well if there's something that's like a china cabinet and they've got a lot of expensive stuff in it i tell them they've got to take the expensive stuff out mm -hmm. we have those little sliders that we put underneath the heavy furniture which doesn't damage floors and even like refrigerators will slide cardboard underneath them to to prevent any problems that way uh customer doesn't back to you later and say oh you scratched my hardwood floors or, right. or you know you did any, any issues and now, if i do see any beforehand i let them know you've got these you know these scratches already here so we don't have any conflicts okay and you're also a general contractor what are some of the other services that you and your company well, I'm, offer i'm a painting contractor painting contractor yes. okay mm -hmm. yes we'll, we'll we'll do some wood repair drywall repair along with that so. okay and i see you offer a free no obligation estimates to right. all the mm -hmm. all the people through your website uh, what is your website again? Uh, MarksPainting.com. MarksPainting.com. Easy enough to remember. So you also do uh, pressure washing and mildew removal as well. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah, that's ahead. that's uh, pretty much a must on any exterior painting because Florida is probably the the area that's affected most with mildew because of the high moisture. So when you're going to repaint an exterior, you, you basically start out with a pressure washing and uh, you you add chlorine in with that to make sure you any mildew is there because sometimes. Uh, Mildew is not seen, but the spores are still there. And if you paint over it without properly neutralizing it, uh, the, the mildew will grow through the paint and then cause you a bigger problem than you started out with. Now, what about in cases of severe uh, mold and in the business we call it discoloration? Um, do you get involved with that, or is it just minor mildew projects? Well, uh, if it's on the surface and it's the exterior, but if, if if we're dealing with a moisture problem of moisture leaking in and you have issues with inside with drywall, 
Uh, I normally recommend there there are mold remediation companies because you at that point you have to come in, cut all the the drywall out, remove all the trim, and uh, neutralize the mildew before you do that because mildew inside the house is very. Uh, can be a lot of health problems can occur with that that you don't know about. And if it's just minor mildew and mold in the house, and once you fix the the source, that's mm-hmm. obviously the biggest problem. Fixing right. the source. I mean, can you just paint over it, or right. what if do you it's have? On, if it's on the surface, yes. Okay. If it's if it's coming from uh, moisture from behind and the mold is going through the drywall, mm-hmm. uh, you have to definitely cut it out and deal with it. Uh, as far as eliminating it, and then you can, you know, re-sheet rock it and re refix it. Yeah, and it's, a, it's an important point to uh, remember for all the homeowners here in Florida, the importance of running your air conditioner in Florida because mold and mildew builds up very quickly right. in this area because That's of the right. high moisture. And so we're, by running your AC, it keeps the air dry and... You know, I specialize in the sale of bank owned properties, and I run into properties all the time that have some degree of mold. I mean, every property has some degree of mold or discoloration, and they say, uh, but I've been in many that it's completely blackened inside from oh, yeah. mold growth. And it only takes, you know, really, I mean, a, a water source, and with the heat right now and the, and the humidity, yeah, I mean, a home can turn into a mold-infested home in a matter of weeks. And so it's very important. Uh, to run your air conditioner and then maintain your homes properly if you have a leak source. So if you're just tuning in, you've been listening to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Winds, WHNZ. Back in a moment, we'll have more with Mark Savino of Mark's Painting. Hi, Jamie Maloney here, your host of the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show. I want to thank each and every one of you for listening to my show on 1250 Winds, WHNZ. The Tampa Bay real estate market is very undersupplied, and we need inventory. There is strong demand from both first-time buyers as well as large investment groups, and many properties are seeing multiple offers due to the lack of inventory in our area to satisfy this demand. As a matter of fact, the Tampa Bay region is at a seven-year low in available inventory, and demand is at its strongest since the market's peak in 2006. This demand has pushed up values in our area as high as 20% in some areas year over year, and you may be surprised what your home is currently worth. I am offering all my listeners a free home valuation if you text the word VALUE to my cell phone at 813-760-8516. Again, text the word VALUE to 813-760-8516, and I will send you a complimentary and detailed home valuation within three business days of speaking to you. Please reach out to me. I've sold nearly 1,000 homes in the Tampa Bay region and have been in business for almost seven years now. I have the market knowledge and experience to help you sell your home, whether big or small, for top price. Don't put one of your biggest investments into the wrong hands. There are many inexperienced agents in the market, and the wrong decision can cost you thousands in a poorly marketed and poorly negotiated deal. Trust your sale to one of the area's top listing agents and contact me today. In addition to having one of the top listing agents in the area representing your home, you can rest assured that you have the area's number one real estate brand, Coldwell Banker, in your corner as well. Coldwell Banker is an internationally recognized real estate brand and properly markets your home across 500 websites, and we also utilize print advertising as well as all the social networking tools and sites to get your home exposed to a broad audience. Please reach out to me today for a free home valuation. Just text the word VALUE to 813-760-8516. Again, 813-760-8516. Or stop by my website at www.tampabayradio.com and fill out my contact form, and I will get in touch with you as soon as possible. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show. Just click on like to receive show updates, as well as a feed of all my listings and current real estate news articles. You can also post questions on the page that I and the audience can discuss. Thanks for tuning in and be back in a moment. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage want you to experience the thrill of one day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12-day clear-to-close. They do this by utilizing their world-class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. 
underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. Since opening its doors 120 years ago, Stewart Title Company has established a lasting legacy of providing professional title services. Even other title insurance companies know Stewart Title Company because they do their actual underwriting for them. Stewart is here to provide a wide range of resources to help improve any real estate transaction. To learn more about protecting yourself against hidden title hazards that may threaten your financial investment, call Melissa Stoddard at 813-431-8025. That's 813-431-8025. In the market for a reverse mortgage? Contact Access Reverse, a local company with personalized service in the Bay Area. Call them at 727-347-0305 or visit accessreverse.com for a no-cost, no-obligation consultation. They'll come to your home and speak with you about the best options for your reverse mortgage. Plus, they offer the lowest closing costs. Don't just get a reverse mortgage. Get the right reverse mortgage with Access Reverse. Visit accessreverse.com. NMLS number 1179063. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit HUDHomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as its appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit HUDHomestore.com. You're listening to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show with local expert, Jamie Maloney. Now, here's Jamie. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Wins WHNZ. Been talking with uh, Mark Savino of Mark's Painting and want to continue the conversation a little bit about lead-based paint. A uh, big uh, issue that came out in the you know the 60s when they you know began to remove uh, lead from you know the base of the paints. Uh, tell me a little bit about you know why this was done. A little bit about you know the lead-based paint uh, concerns out there. Well, uh, the problem with lead-based paints is that uh, if you ingest it or you sand it and, and inhale it, it can cause all sorts of health problems. Uh, the main part is with children when they're uh, you got peeling paint, kids will tend to pick it up, chew on it, eat it causes development, developmental problems, can be behavioral problems, all sorts of issues, and, and stunt growth. And, and I believe in adults, you can have you know, some blood pressure, cardiovascular problems, you know, a multitude of different things, and you, and you don't realize where it's coming from. Yeah, and, and, and reading about it, and uh, it, has a, it gives the paint a sweet taste, so if yes. there's paint chips, children are, are, you know, could be likely to put it in their mm -hmm. mouth and then like the yeah. taste of it and yeah. then just and makes it, it And it was definitely in, in old, hard, oil-based paints, so uh, we're finding that the houses that were built prior to 78 is when that, 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 that occurred. Uh, the paint, paints will delaminate at this point because they've been on so long. And the, I find a lot of houses in, in the areas that we do uh, are, ha are having a lot of these issues. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, a lot of the homeowners don't really take it very seriously. You go there and explain to them, hey, you have a lead-based problem. I have to notify you of it. I have to handle it in a certain manner because I'm a lead-based renovator. You know, by the EPA, and and if they're they really they seem very unconcerned about it, which is very alarming to me. So, um, I'd like to know why did I put lead originally in 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 paint? I mean, you know, lead is a know is, is a, not good is a anyway, cheap so. binder, okay. and it made the, the the it made it inexpensive to make and very hard. So most of the of the products are dealing with uh, enamels on wood. Uh, it's probably less common on wall paint. So you'll see it on wood trim in houses the most and the exterior woods on, on, on older houses. Uh, and again, you know, a less, less common in wall paints. Why was it less common in wall paints? What was uh, the difference? Because they, they were mostly painted flats back then and they were like made out of this thing called calcimine, which didn't require the, the heavy binders that a lead would have. Okay, so you see yeah. mostly in the door trims and the mm -hmm. window frames. Right, but, but the houses still have to be tested. So how do you test the house? What's the procedure to find out if well, they, you, they your paint has can, lead? Uh, they're test, EPA approved test kits that, that I have. But uh, unless you have a test that says that the house does not have lead in it, you have to assume that every house has it and you have to treat it as such with peeling paint. Now, if I'm going into a house that's built prior to 78 and there's no peeling paint and I'm not sanding or abrading anything, it, it's exempt from the rule. Or, you know, if the homeowner does it themselves, they don't have to do it that way. So they, there are certain exemptions uh, that the EPA has given out. Uh, so, but if I go in there and there's any sanding involved, uh, I, I have to treat 
it as a lead-based house unless I have a, a test uh, by them or I can provide a, a, a test that it's it's done. So it's, what, so what is the, and just briefly, what is the process to remediate? You just sand it down where some well, type of respiration? We have, and we have, we have, we have to contain the, the area if it's interior. Mm -hmm. Uh, we we have uh, sanders that have HEPA filter vacuums on them. So uh, those those can vary anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars to buy those. Uh, and then you use that, and then, you, then you have, once the area once you're done with that, you have to remove all the, every the plastic and everything you have contained and wipe down all the surfaces twice. And that's the minimum. But the HEPA filter and vacuums, the tools that they have now for it are, are excellent. You know, it really helps a lot. So. Can you tell us what's the pricing to do the test, first of all, and what would be the pricing to actually remediate to lead-based paint? Well, uh, the, the tests are normally about, if you send it to a lab, it's about 250 to $350, depending on the lab. I, I do a, a, a field test with the field kit, and I, it, it generally will give me, it'll turn pink or not, and it'll give me the uh, results. But uh, pretty much... I've never been in a house that the paint has been peeling down to the old trim built in the in the 50s, 60s, or early 70s that has not really come back positive with lead. So, uh, I, I I tell people to save the the money for the expensive test and just handle it the correct Is way. Is it an expensive process to remediate a typical 1,500 square foot home? Well, um, I don't remove all lead. Only thing I'm doing is is uh, uh, going in and removing anything that's peeling. It can it, it can get to be if it's a if it's in a wide range area in the house. It can because uh, you have to have no one in the house. I have to tent it off. I have to clean up every time I'm done. It it, it probably quadruples the time it takes me to do it. So, so, so it's sort of like treating for termites. You got to put right. a tent around the property. Right. And All right. They, well, if it's in a, like if we're working in a bedroom, we we tent the we, oh, we we have to shut off the air conditioner. We have to block up all the vents. We have to put plastic all the way around and the flooring, and then do our removal. And then, and how many everything. how many days is a typical process for just the average size home? Is it a, room couple, could, of, well, a, a couple of rooms can take a day or two just to do? It depending on how, I mean, if it's a few areas peeling, it's not much. If it, if it's a tremendous, there was one uh, one I looked at that was a, a back porch. It was uh, almost the entire thing was coming down, and, and, and a sale was involved in it. So they had to bring me as as far as giving an estimate, and I, it was one back porch, and it was like fifteen hundred dollars just to, to do a back porch because it was uh, it was a lot of time involved. Right. So. Well, some great information. Uh, getting ready here to got to wrap it up here, uh, Mark. Real quick uh, for the audience, uh, how can you get in touch with you uh, off air? Um, you can call me at uh, 813-831-5433, or you can go to my website, markspainting.com. Okay, one more time with the phone number for the audience, if you would. 813-831-5433. Okay, and uh, if you didn't catch that information, he'll be up on the, uh, with the Tampa Bay radio site here uh, within the next couple of days uh, as a uh, past guest on the uh, Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show. Mark, thank you very much uh, for coming on the show. A lot of great information. Thank you for having me. If uh, you're just tuning in, you, know, you found the uh, Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show here on 1250 Winds WHNZ. We were just talking with uh, Mark Savino of Mark's Painting. And also in studio, we had the lovely Stella Giudicelli, realtor with uh, Codal Banker as well. Uh, I want to invite you into my uh, website, again, tampabayradio.com. And you can get me off the air via my phone as I am a local uh, listing agent. can help you out with uh, the sale of your home. If you just uh, give me a call, 813 760 Eight five one six again eight one three seven six zero eight five one six. I hope everybody has a great week. Enjoy the Fourth uh, of July weekend as will I, and I will see you here back again next Monday at noon on the Jamie Maloney Real Estate Show. Have a great week. The opinion.